around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Ladies and gentlemen, later on tonight's program, you'll hear a special message from the Honorable Edward F. Arne, Governor of the State of Kansas. But now we bring you the first act of Gunsmoke. It's going to be spring before we know it, Mr. Dillon. Well, this weather won't hold, Chester. We always got a rip snorter after a spell like this. I sure don't look much like it today. <laughs> I even heard a metal lark this morning. It's early for metal larks, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's what I'm telling you. Spring is downright staring us in the face. <laughs> well, the Texas Trail's kind of lively for this time of the afternoon. Now, it'll be livelier if you're right about spring and those trail herds start rolling in. Well, look who's here. And in the daytime, too. Well, howdy, Miss Kitty. Miss Kitty. Isn't it wonderful out? And guess what, Matt? I heard a metal lark this morning. <laughs> you and Chester. Huh? I've been telling him, Miss Kitty, spring is just around the corner. Uh-huh. Kitty? Yeah. How come there's such a crowd in here? Oh, you mean the boys at the bar? Yeah. Well, it's some of the riders from the Cyclone Ranch. They're celebrating. Well, it seems to me they were celebrating Saturday night. They're making kind of a long weekend out of it. Oh, well, Jim Paulson said they all went back to the ranch Monday morning, but they got paid off. What? Huh? Yeah, the ranch was sold. Sold? You mean old man Bartlett sold out? I hadn't heard anything about it. Well, that's what they said. The new owner had already taken over some stranger... He's the one who paid him off. He brought his own riders with him. Well, what's this stranger's name, Kitty? Well, I don't know, man. Ed Revere over there was Bartlett's foreman. Ask him. Yeah, I think I will. Excuse me. Howdy, Marshal. Figure on throwing us in the hoose, gal? <laughs> no, Ed, I wasn't planning on it. Uh, do you happen to know where I can find old man Bartlett? Well, afraid you're out of luck. Him and his wife's left the country. At least that's what the fellow that bought the ranch told us. You mean he didn't even stay around to pay you off? Nope. Made up his mind right sudden, I reckon. Guess this fellow Jed Wade made him a mighty good offer. Jed Wade, huh? Yeah. Texas man, more than likely. Ain't from around here, anyways. None of his cowboys, neither. And you haven't seen old man Bartlett since you left the ranch and came into town Saturday morning, huh? Mary hiding her hair. And he didn't say anything last week about planning to sell? No, he didn't. Sure can't figure old man Bartlett selling out. Said he put half his life into that place and planned on living out the rest of it right there. Well, listen, Ed, let me ask you something. Uh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. What do you figure about all this? Uh, I don't know, Marshal. Except it ain't quite right somehow. You don't think there's something crooked about it, do you? Marshal, I don't know what to think. But it just ain't like Bartlett to run out this way. If there's anything I can do... Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Ed. Marshal, I don't even have to look it up in the records. There's been no deed of sale on the Cyclone Ranch filed in this office. If there had, I'd know about it. Yeah, well, all right, thanks. That's all I wanted to know. Furthermore, there won't be one filed. Old man Bartlett will live out his life and die right there. You take it from me. Yeah, well, that's what I figured. Mr. Dillon? Oh, come on in, Chester. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Miffin. Oh, quite all right, sir. 
I believe our business is completed. Yeah, yeah. What'd you find out, Chester? I checked the depot and the stage lines, Mr. Dillon, and nobody in town hasn't seen either one of them since last week. Mm-hmm. Well, all right, Chester. I guess we better ride out to the ranch. Looks like that new outfit brought some of their own cattle up from Texas, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. And they're wasting no time slapping a brand on them, either. Want to take a look at them? Uh, no. Let's ride on up to the house. I sure can't figure it, Mr. Dillon. Working night and day to build up a good feeder ranch like this and then up and selling out without even thinking it over. Well, I can't figure it either, Chester. All right. It sure is a fine ranch. We ain't hiring anybody. Better mount up and ride. Are you Jed Wade? Name's Dallas. I'm the range boss. Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Mr. Wade here? He's out in the barn. What do you want to see him about? Well, suppose I take that up with him, huh? And suppose you turn around and hightail it out of here. Whenever Jed's got business with the law, he'll come to you. Now, look, mister. Dad, I... you had not to talk to visitors that way. Jed don't want strangers hanging around, Miss Wade. And he don't want you talking to strangers either. You better go on back in the house. I guess I know better than you what my own son wants. I'm the only one that understands him. You come right on inside, gentlemen. <laughs> Mr. Dillon, did you say that was the name? Yes, ma'am, that's right. Uh, this is my partner, Chester Proudfoot. How do, ma'am? How do? You fellas wait right there. I'll go get Jed. I think we'll accept the lady's invitation. Uh, after you, ma'am. Why, thank you, Mr. Dillon. Surely does perk a body up for the having callers in her own house. Especially when you live so long from hand to mouth. I, uh... Understand that you're new here, ma'am. Oh, yes. Yes, we were camped for three weeks down along the river. Nearly a caller, just living in a wagon. Oh, do be seated, gentlemen. Thank you. Ain't this a real pretty place now? Why, when Jed and Dallas rode back to camp Sunday morning and said they just bought a real bargain, I couldn't dream they meant something like this. A body just can't figure why the owners would ever want to sell it and leave. Uh, would you gentlemen care for some cold be- buttermilk? Uh, no, thank you, ma'am. Uh, you uh, didn't meet the owners yourself then, huh? No, no. They're already gone when I came over. Oh, you mustn't mind Dallas, Mr. Dillon. He's really a good boy at heart. Him and Jed just picked up a habit of talking mean like that sometimes, and seems like people just don't understand it. Mr. Dillon, Jed ain't got himself into some kind of trouble again, has he? Again, Mrs. Wade? Well, it's like I said. People just don't understand Jed lots of times. It ain't easy to bring up a boy alone, and a body don't always know what's the right way to do and, and what not. But Jed's real good-hearted down underneath. Once you understand him like I do, why, why the way he even talks to me sometimes would make you yeah, think that he was... Well, son, I... What did I tell you about mouthing off to strangers? But I was... Go on, only... get in the kitchen. Well, all right, son. She's getting old, and it's been a hard trip up here. Dallas told me you was here, Marshal. What can I do for you? What do you want? I'd like to see your bill of sale for this ranch, Mr. Wade. What for? Well, I'll tell you after I see it. Are you trying to accuse me of something? Not if you got a bill of sale signed by old man Bartlett. Well. All right, Marshal. There you are. 
Take a look. Uh-huh. Satisfied now. Where did the Bartlett's go, Mr. Wade? They said they was leaving the country, and that's all I know about it. Here, you want to give me back my bill of sale now? Well, I'd like to take it into town and check the signature, if you don't mind. Hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> It'll check. Well, then you've got nothing to worry about, have you? Nary thing, Marshal. Now, I don't know what's on your mind, but you're barking up wrong tree. <laughs> Mr. Dillon, I'd say that Wade and his partner are ornery enough for anything. Just plumb, cussed, downright, sneak in mean. Uh, maybe so, Chester. But you can't jail a man for meanness, not as long as it only comes out in words. Mm, I suppose. There ought to be a law of some kind. Now, take like the way he talks to his mom. I don't see how she can put up with it. She's his mother, Chester. Well, I know that, oh, but there's hello, no... Matt. Oh, hi, you Doc. Yeah, just getting ready to close up the office. How about feeding with me? Uh, later, maybe, Doc. I uh, Say, uh, Doc, you still got that bill of sale on that horse you bought last fall from old man Bartlett. Oh, uh, sure, I guess so, Matt. Why? Well, I just want to check Bartlett's signature. Why, well, what do you got there? I know his signature pretty well. Let me take a look at that now, man. Oh, uh, here. Uh, see what you think, huh? Uh... Oh, oh, yes. That's old man Bartlett's scrawl, all right, of course it is. Well, maybe I was wrong. Yes, sir. It looks that way, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. But only about the bill of sale, Chester. We still don't know what happened to the Bartlett's. <laughs> This time it is with great pride that Gunsmoke is able to bring you a specially recorded message by the Honorable Edward F. Arne, Governor of the State of Kansas. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Arne. It's a real pleasure for me on behalf of Kansans everywhere to congratulate the CBS radio network, the writers, producers, directors, actors, and technicians on the splendid job you are doing with Gunsmoke. Here is real adult western drama without the usual horse opera cliches portraying an era and community of Kansas that graphically marked the formative years of our great state. Let me point out, however, the Dodge City of today is a far cry from the Dodge City so vividly brought to life in gun smoke. From those early pioneer and frontier days, Dodge City has developed into one of the fine cities of our state, industrially, agriculturally, and historically. The folks of Dodge City, and indeed all the people of this great sunflower state, thank you for a good job well done. Thank you, Governor Arne. And now the second act of Gunsmoke. In here, too. Must be the feel of spring in the air. <laughs> Get the man on the prod. Makes him feel good. Uh, not me, Chester. Yes, sir, I've been noticing that. You haven't said one dozen words in the last hour. It don't do a man any good to stay down in the dump that way. Oh, drink your beer. Well, now, we just made a mistake. That's all. Got, got the wind up over nothing. Uh, now we know it's old man Bartlett's signature, but... I just can't help feeling that we haven't made a mistake. Well, maybe you ought to make one, Matt. Oh, hi, Kitty. Everybody ought to make a mistake once in a while. Keeps them from getting old. Or else helps them along. What's your trouble, Matt? Oh, uh, feeling that somebody's guilty. 
not being able to prove it. It's that Cyclone Ranch business, Miss Kitty. Now, I know Bartlett didn't sell out. His signature is on that bill of sale, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, but a man can be made to sign something, Chester. Well, why don't you find Mr. Bartlett and ask him? Well, I'd settle for just finding him. I don't think I'd need to do any more asking. Do you mean that the way it sounds, Matt? Yeah. I know I'm jumping at conclusions, but... Now, the way things add up, it's the only answer that makes any sense. Well, I hope you're wrong, Matt. Well, so do I, but I don't think I am. Anyway, there's not much you can do about it right now. Why don't you forget it for a while? How about a round of drinks, Matt, in honor of spring? Spring, huh? <laughs> you and Chester. Well, it is, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, even the coyotes feel it. Did you hear him just after dark tonight yapping down along the river bottom? Yeah, I heard him. Uh, Kitty, would you mind if uh, we had that drink later? Well, all right. But where are you going? Well, I, I just thought that uh, Chester and I might take a little ride, that's all. cigarette, Mr. Dillon? Uh, no, you better not. We're too close to the Bartlett place. Miss Kitty sure was right about those coyotes. Every one of them and his brothers out tonight, all yapping their fool heads off. Yeah. You suppose those coyotes really know it's spring coming, Mr. Dillon? It could be. They're sure scattered all over the countryside. Now, there seems to be more of them off there toward the river bottom, though. Yes, sir. I believe you're right, Mr. Dillon. Wonder why. I don't know. Might be worthwhile taking a look. Yes, sir. Oh. You know, it sounds to me like most of those coyotes are up around those river bluffs there by the bend. Yes, Mr. Dillon, I believe it does just that. Come on, Chester, let's ride over that way. They're on the other side of that willow thicket. All right. Now, let's cut through the thicket here. Yeah. They must be awful interested in something, or they sure wouldn't let us get this close. I guess they heard you, Chester. I think most of them are over there at the foot of the bank. Let's take a look. Come on. Chunk of the bank's caved off there, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Yeah, but the coyotes didn't do it. They've been trying to dig something up, not bury it. I wish there was more moonlight. Yes, sir. Well, if you'd have told me what we were up to, I could have brought a lantern. Well, I didn't know we were going to run into anything, Chester. Yes, sir. Uh, see if you can find a stick and let's scratch around in this loose dirt, huh? All right, sir. Anybody in I had to tell me this morning that I'd be out here in the middle of the night digging in that dirt like a groundhog. Not even knowing what the same hill I was... What is it, Chester? Did you find something? Yes, sir. I sure have. Here, let me see. Lucky hunch you had, Mr. Dillon. Well, now we know why nobody saw the Bartlett's leave town. They killed him. 
They killed both of them. Yeah. After they made them sign that bill of sale. Hit the dirt, Chester. They came from the edge of the bank up there. Watch for the next flash. Is that you, Wade? Just to the left of that sumac, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I saw it. You're under arrest for murder, Wade. Now throw down that gun and come out of there with your hands up. All right, Chester, let's open up on him. Careful, Chester. You may be faking it. Yes, sir. Only one thing, Mr. Dillon. It's not Wade. It's Dallas. Then let's go find Wade. Like they're all in bed. Well, it may be easier that way. Yes, sir. I wish there was some way of keeping his mother out of it. I don't see how it can be. Dad? Is that you? Did you scare the coyotes away? I heard the shooting and I... It's not Dallas, ma'am. Why, it's the marshal and Mr. Proudfoot. At this time of night. Well, this is quite a surprise. Yes, ma'am, I reckon so. Is Jed here? Well, I guess so. Maybe he's out in the barn or somewhere. What's wrong, Mr. Dillon? I sure do hope Jed ain't in some kind of trouble. I just want to talk to him, Miss Wayne. Why don't you go on back in the house, huh? And we'll see if we can find him. Well, all right, if you think best. You just go straight on back through the barn. I reckon you'll find him all right. Thank you, ma'am. It's not going to be easy. Yeah, I know. Keep yourself covered. I will. Sounds like he's working back there. Yeah. Bartlett put up enough prairie hay here to last for three years. Right on back, Dad. Just about got these here running irons finished. Dallas won't be needing what? any running irons, Wade, or anything else. He's dead. We found where you buried the Bartlett's. That's where that shooting was. You and Dallas. You're under arrest for murder, Wade. And if you make a move, you're going to end up the same way Dallas did. How could I do anything, Marshal? I've got no gun. I noticed it hanging on the wall there behind you. You leave it there. Uh, sure. Now lay down that hammer and stick out your wrist. Uh, sure. Anything you say? He smashed the lantern, Mr. Dillon. Don't watch it, Chester. You'll have his gun now. Get back, Chester. <laughs> Get back toward the door. I can't see a thing in all this smoke. <laughs> yeah, that haze is dry as powder. This barn's going to go up like a tinderbox. Wade, you haven't got a chance. Now come on out of there while you still can. Why don't you come back here and get me? You're a crazy fool. Come on out now. The heat's getting awful bad, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> back toward the door, Chester. We're going to have to get out of here. Yes, Let's go out. Take it in. What time, Chester? Even for a man like Wade, that's not a good way to die, Mr. Dillon. Oh, no way is. Then you come right down to it, Chester. Dad! I've got Dad! He's in there, Eddie! He's in there with all that fire! I'm sorry, ma'am, but... You've got to go get him out of there! No. I, I'm afraid there's no use, ma'am. I'm going there no, 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 no. It's too Dad. late to help me. I always know 
knowed it was going to end like this sometime. I always knowed it. I'm sorry, Miss Wade. You had done something real bad, didn't he, Mr. Dillon? Him and Dallas. That's why you come back here. Yes, ma'am, I'm afraid so. They killed the people who owned this ranch. They buried them down along the river bank. Those boys done a lot of bad things, Mr. Dillon. But I don't hold with killing. I'm sorry it had to happen this way, ma'am. Mr. Dillon, I'd like to ask a favor. Oh, why, certainly, ma'am. I come out here in a wagon. It's out back of the house. Now that it's getting light, if you'd hitch up my team to it, I'd like to go back to town with you. Chester? Yes, Mr. Dillon, I'll do it. I'll just take what I brought, uh, Mr. Dillon. Nothing else. Well, just as you like, ma'am. It's all in the trunk. Funny thing. I never did unpack it. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were V.V. Janis, Harry Bartell, Lawrence Dobkin, Joe Cranston, and Jerry Hausner. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Tomorrow night, Theater of Stars brings you Dana Andrews as a New England fisherman of the old school in a colorful, exciting drama of the Clipper Ship Day, titled The Token. Hear what happens when a determined young lady steals her sister's betrothal token and then sets out to steal the stalwart young fisherman as well. It's on Theater of Stars tomorrow night on most of these same stations, a feature presentation of CBS Radio at the Star's Address. And you've heard of people stopping the show. Well, there's a show on CBS Radio every Sunday evening that stops the people. It's the Jack Benny Show, of course. And when it comes on the air, practically everybody stops doing practically everything except laughing. So tomorrow night, just stop everything and listen to Jack Benny. He'll be on your favorite CBS Radio station. George Walsh speaking. And remember, Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks, also teaches you how to laugh Sundays on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>